today we're going to have a bit of a quick look at uh, Trisco Linux. Now, if you haven't heard of Trisco, it is a completely libre and free operating system. This distribution is completely libre, completely free, as in there is no non-free software. It's completely, completely free software. Because the important definition here is that the um, free has in has in speech, not as in free has in beer. This is basically the typical saying that you get. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see, the latest version is let's see which one is the latest version. 4.5, code name slain. It is a GNOME 2 distribution, at least for now. So like I said, completely free, so there is no there is no non-free firmware, none of that. It's all completely Libre, completely free software. Anyway. We'll get the uh, VirtualBox fired up and we'll have a bit of a look at it, shall we? And uh, I, I figured I wouldn't do an installation, uh, showing installation, that sort of thing. It, it's basically just a typical Ubuntu installer, but tweaked to have the uh, the Triscoll, uh, the Triscoll theming and logos and branding, all that sort of thing. And uh, they go on about their free software and uh, just just the usual sort of thing you see in an Ubuntu installer, just change for their for Triscoll basically. So like I said, completely free and libre distribution. There won't be any uh, non-free codecs, none of that out of the box. There won't be any Adobe Flash or that sort of thing. Um, you know, it <coughs> it's all up to uh, you know, what you want. If you want to have a completely free and libre uh, distribution, then this is certainly one that you'll probably want to ch Just a simple password, since it's just a, a uh, virtual box. Oh yes, it's uh, it's actually been approved by the Free Software Foundation as uh, being on their list. You know, their their one list of uh, distributions that are completely free and that meet all the requirements. And there's enough, there's no non-free software in the repos or that sort of thing. Anyway, we're getting there. A bit glitchy because of the virtual box, but anyway. Uh, so as we can see. This is in fact GNOME 2. Um, I have to say that my first impressions were very uh, good in the way that they've styled the GNOME panel because it actually got some transparency going. Uh, I've, I've played around with it a bit. This is actually what it looks like by default. The only difference that I have modified myself in the relatively short time of trying out this distribution in this virtual box is putting a smooth task. Uh, not smooth task, sorry, that's a KDE version. This one's called Actually, I feel terrible. I cannot remember what the name of this actual apple it is. Let's have a look here. I've used it quite a bit, and I've forgotten the name because I've been using KDE lately, so I've forgotten the actual name of it. Ah, of course. <coughs> DocBarX apple. DocBarX is what gives you this Windows 7 like uh, task management here, anyway. Moving on. So as you can see, they've got sort of a square box theme. Uh, it looks like Nautilus Elementary or an elementary type theme they've got going here. Uh, they've got their own icon set. Uh, looks pretty nice, I have to say. Like I said, this is uh, the first impression of the appearance is very good. It looks like um, taking out the Doc Bar X applet. It actually is uh, designed to be a bit like Windows 7 in the interface. So the web browser, first of all. At first, looking at the icon, the fact that it's just called web browser, I expect it to be Epiphany, but it's not. Uh, it'll load up their home page by default. That's actually what it does. Go to About Web Browser. And what do you know? 3.6.17. It is, in fact, Firefox, but without the branding. It's taken out all the all the branding to make it a completely, completely free Mo Mozilla-based browser for Triscoll. As you can see, yeah, Mozilla, etc., etc., all good. I've used it a little bit. It's fine. It does exactly what you could expect. Uh, we'll leave that for now. We'll just have a look at the rest of the applications. Uh, you get Open Office as your Office Suite. Uh, I think it opens relatively fast. Of course, it's not as fast as LibreOffice, but it does the job. So, all good, all good. It should fire up, and uh, I dare say, yep, as you can see. Uh, Ubiqui Ubiquitous uh, 1980. Another YouTuber will be quite happy to see this. Uh, out of the box, they have the Galaxy theme as the icon set in OpenOffice here, which is actually very nice. Because uh, uh, he and a lot of other people probably commented that the default theme that some distributions apply, uh, the Tango theme, doesn't look quite as good. But yeah, anyway, lovely. So thumbs up there. Anywho, moving on again. 
Uh, the usual for known, basically, Evolution Mail and Dictionary. Uh, Gimpy, of course. Which fires up pretty nice and fast. Actually, the distribution is pretty fast, uh, for the most part. Um, it is Ubuntu-based, I forgot to mention that. It is Ubuntu-based, I believe, of course, stripped of all the non-free stuff. It's completely Libre, completely free. And uh, so it doesn't have some of the extra stuff, and um, I suppose in some ways you could argue it's uh, nowhere near as bloated. It is, it is very stripped down in a lot of ways, and so it is pretty quick and uh, good old simple scan. I mean, you've got to love simple scan. Probably one of my favourite tools. It just does what it does. It just as Sneaky Linux would say, it just does what it says on the tin. <laughs> it, it does exactly what you can expect. No more, no less. All good. Uh, cheese webcam, of course. It's becoming a pretty common application. You've got Exile Music Player, is your music player? Obviously. Uh, if it ever fires up, it's being a little bit slower today, I guess, because of the recording, but generally it's been running very smooth in the virtual box. Anyway, so that's that's Exile. Now, I've noticed, since I've been using Clementine, that this is actually a similarish interface, actually. It has very similar stylings to Clementine or Amarok 1.4. Uh, you know, you've got your controls here, your playlist here, your collection here, that sort of thing. Very similar anyway. I'm sure it does a job. It's not my personal favourite, but it does a job. Movie player, which is, of course, Totem. Now, this is very important. We'll get to why later. It's um, Basically, it's used as a plug-in in the web browser, and we'll see but later why that is. Old convert, to convert media files to free formats. Uh, Pitivi, video editor. That's alright. Uh, I haven't really used it myself. I use KDN Live or OpenShot, but apparently this is a pretty good one. You know, all good, simple, easy to use, should have a fair few features. Yep, all good. And uh, where were we? Okay, sound recorder, that's typical. The usual GNOME games, you know, nothing super exciting, but enough. Uh, Brazero Disk Burner, the Calculator Disk Use Analyzer, of course, Doc Byrex, which I installed, but the rest is all pretty stock, so GNote, uh, Search of Files, Take Screenshot, the Terminal, Text Editor, which is, of course, is the awesome Get It. And uh, adding remove programs is, in fact, not anything, obviously, like the Ubuntu Software Center, but it's actually an old favorite of mine, which t takes us back to the, uh, the Ubuntu days before, before 10.x, basically. Before the um, before their you know their own software thing, this add remove programs are very nice. It takes me back because it's I actually probably prefer this in a lot of ways. Um, besides something like Synaptic, this is my personal favorite for adding and removing package packages because it's it just does what it's supposed to. You've got your your, your ratings here. You can search, you know. And uh, like I said, it will it will have all the non free stuff instead of you know like you'd see in Ubuntu, you would have. Uh, all available applications, all free applications, or non-free or whatever, you've just got all available applications are installed. And uh, so yeah, it is only, of course, <coughs> all free applications. And But there's still a lot there, because after all, it's still Debian-based, and there's still an absolute ton, and I mean an absolute ton, of free software. So you're not going to find any shortage of software here. The main thing going to be missing, of course, is a typical codex, and uh, Excel still running. Use typical codex, and of course Flash and all that stuff, and, and firmware for your wireless. So you might, on some machines, have some problem with wireless if you don't have the you know the non-free firmware for it. But that's why it's worth going to the Free Software Foundation and Triscoll site and looking up the compatibility to make sure that you you probably can run it and all that sort of thing. Um, so I've tried in the VirtualBox. I have also tried this on my laptop just for the heck of it, just to see what would work in a totally Libre distribution. And I have to say that uh, it, 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 a lot of it, everything worked except a slight sound issue. It had a sound issue where the speakers wouldn't work, but the headphone jack would work. And that's a pretty common problem with that particular chipset, which is more to do with uh, the ALSA compatibility rather than anything to do with it being uh, completely free. The wireless, which is a uh, Afro's card, I believe, actually worked out of the box with this completely free distribution. So everything, and no graphics acceleration, but we had a proper resolution, that's all I could ask for. So it was running really nicely. The only thing was slightly, was no sound in the speakers. That was the only problem. So I was very, very impressed with that. Anyway, so we'll just go to the uh, typical preferences here. There's nothing really worth showing, I don't think. 
the typical GNOME 2 stuff. Uh, it does come with Compiz, not enabled here obviously because of VirtualBox, not enabled on my laptop because of the ATI inbuilt card, but like I said, the graphics worked enough that we had basic uh, proper graphics going. Computer generator, not a fan of that, but that's okay. The Deja Dup backup tool, that's pretty popular, nice little backup to disk utility, you know, the usual stuff. Here's your software sources, but like I said, there's still tons of software available. Uh, back to administration, and then of course good old Synaptic, you can't go wrong with that. And your update manager, there's only about 26 updates when I, I tried updating after I installed it, so I guess it's pretty up to date out of the box as far as that goes. Typical GNOME, only 180 megabytes. I'm only allocated 512 megs in this virtual box. I'd like to do that, especially with a with a distribution like this, just to see just you know what the sort of minimum you can get away with and how it runs. And I've got to say, it does run pretty well, even considering this. Uh, barely all CPU, of course. Virtual box, it's only allocated one CPU because I'm only running a, a dual core host. Yep, 4.5 slain, and uh, the kernel is 2.6.35-28, generic, GNOME 2.32. And actually, we'll just have a quick look at the uh, the uh, pictures, the backgrounds and that sort of thing. Oh uh, yeah, also, like I said, the theme is basically, what is it, Trisk? Well, yeah, it's basically just an elementary type theme. Uh, it's got not very many backgrounds, actually. It's only got a few. I mean, they're nice enough backgrounds, what can I say? but you know they're not super amazing or anything but they're okay so you're probably thinking well uh, completely non, uh, non uh, completely free no flash what do you do for YouTube well here's the thing we'll go to YouTube the good old tube and of course in the search bar the default is DuckDuckGo instead of Google which is a completely free search engine but you do have the rest here interestingly enough so you still have Google and Yahoo and all that sort of thing if you need it so we'll just I'm not sure how this will run in a uh, virtual box while recording <coughs> but uh, so no flash you say well what they've done out of the box is included a plugin which uses Totem called Flash Video Replacer, which you'll see up in this corner here. Um, open up the preferences. You know, of course, disable websites. It's compatible with YouTube, Vimeo, Metacafe, Blip.tv, Ustream, and some other video websites that it just might happen to work with. Uh, it replaces what you would usually see the Flash Video with the Totem plugin, which will play it for you. And it actually generally works okay. Now we're going to have a quick test here. I'm hoping it does work. I have had a few videos not work in the virtual box, but for the most part this plugin does work and we should in a minute see this video load. Yep, look at that. Lovely jovely. We have absolute we have flash working. We have a video playing. I can hear sound, you probably can't, but it, it's working fine. You're obviously not gonna get uh, annotations or ads or anything like that, but it does ex what it's supposed to. It does play YouTube videos. Um It's the success rate with the, f the flash videos is pretty good. Uh, I've tested it with quite a few videos. A couple did not play for no apparent reason; they just didn't, and there was no consistency to them. They were my own videos on my own channel, and the same, the same codecs, the same encoding, everything like that. There was no explicit reason for them not to work. They just didn't work. Um, and. Um, they just wouldn't play, but a lot of others did. The success rate, I would say, with Flash videos was at least 90%. Uh, so that plugin does work very well. You can watch YouTube and a lot of other Flash-based uh, videos. So yeah, I think that's about it, really. Uh, it's Driscoll. It's like I said, it's a completely Libre operating system. You may not find it to be compatible with your hardware because of the firm that I think that if it works for your machine and you want a completely free operating system completely Libre this is really worth a look because um, besides the other ones like GNU Sense which also are Ubuntu based this is really well set up out of the box other than that like I said it's really quite an attractive looking and quite an attractive looking uh, distribution out of the box too with the way they've set it up so yeah like I said, if you're interested in a completely Libre operating system, give it a shot, guys. Have a look at it and, yeah, tell me what you think. So I think that's about all. Anyway, guys, 
any questions, anything like that, anything I've missed or got wrong, let me know. Other than that, rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Thank you very much, guys.